Hello YouTube, this is Learn Tutorials. Welcome to your 23rd GIMP tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the hue saturation tool in GIMP. So let's get started. First, go to the colors tab, go to hue saturation, second one down. Dialog's going to pop up with a ton of stuff on it, but despite knowing it or not, you already know most of the stuff on this dialog, for example. Heat lightness, you know that, you know saturation, you know the reset, preview, you know the help button gives you documentation, and you know that the preset uh, thing, what it does from the last tutorial. Now, what I want to get into specifically is all of this weird looking stuff up here, and these two sliders. So let's get started. You're going to see a hue slider right here. When you slide it to the right, a whole ton of things are going to happen. It's going to change all of the colors in the image to really weird stuff. For example, there is a red stripe on the carpet. Now it's teal. There were blue pants that are now green. There's a whole lot of stuff going on here. And also, uh, like all of these colors, if it's if the slider's all the way to the right, it's going to completely trade places with uh, the opposite color. For example, Red was up here, now it's where cyan was, and cyan is where red was. Uh, same with yellow and blue and green and magenta. They've all traded places. Now, this is a whole ton of stuff going on at once, and it's kind of confusing. So, let's just take it step by step. When you slide the hue slider to the right a little bit, you're going to see the colors up here change. Just focus on them. They're just going to change and now they're completely opposite. Now, if I go, not really slow, but if I just stop at 60, you're going to notice that when you go 60 units, I suppose, over to the right on the hue slider, all of these colors are going to rotate clockwise. Now, what this means, really what it's doing, is you remember those blue pants let me just show you blue pants right here well now since magenta has rotated clockwise into uh, where blue was that means that all the blue in the image is now turning into magenta and same thing with yellow and green it had yellowish sandals I suppose but now they're green because it rotated clockwise now Oh, let me just reset it to get the original image back. When you go 60, I guess, units to the left, or I guess just to the left at all, it doesn't have to be exactly 60 units, but like you can do 120, 180, you can do anything in between if you want. But if you specifically, I'm just going to use it in as, as an example, go 60 units to the left, you're going to see that all of these colors have rotated counterclockwise. That means that all of the, for example, like all the red, the red stripe right here, is now turned into magenta. So uh, that's just what I want to show you. Oh, and also, by the way, all the cyan in the image is now turned into green because of the rotation. So that's why these pants look a little green too, because there is probably some cyan uh, in those pants. So let's just click reset. Now this is really fine and dandy for just making weird looking stuff if you wanna, but there's even more that you can do. For example, select primary color to adjust. Right now, when you first opened the dialog, I'm pretty sure that the, this master button was selected but you can actually click on any of these circles. For example, if you want to change all the blue in the image, you can do a ton of stuff. You can just change all the blue in the image. For example, watch this. Look at these pants right here. You can change the hue of the pants to whatever you want. You can change how light they are. That kind of makes it look weird up here by the socks, by the way. And then you can change how saturated it is and you can do a ton of stuff and it's not affecting the red stripes it's not affecting 
the shoes is kind of affecting the socks just because it's weird i guess but it's really not doing anything else to the other colors red is red magenta is magenta cyan is cyan but blue has been changed all the blue in the image has been changed now yeah you can uh, oh yeah by the way there's a couple other things i want to tell you for example let's say uh you mess around with one color that looks horrible by the way and then you start messing around with another color and let's say you want to reset only this blue color. Just click reset color. Because if you hit reset, it's going to reset all of the colors. So yeah, you gotta, uh, you know, remember that there's two separate reset buttons. And don't hit reset when you only mean to do the color. Otherwise, I'll just lose all your progress. And there's one more thing, I think. For example, I'm not sure this image is going to be a good, a good, um, example for it but there's this overlap slider right here now let me just choose yellow i guess let's say i do this yeah for example right here you can see a whole ton of i guess artifacts is what they call them or it's just really blotchy looking stuff like somebody just took a bunch of paint and splatted it all over these shoes like all of this weird stuff over here when i'm changing the yellow now, if you want to change that, the overlap slider is going to let you affect that color that you're currently working on and all of, not all of the colors, but, and the colors close to that color. So, for example, yellow will be affected and all of the colors very, very, very close to yellow. It's not going to, you know, mess around with the reds or the greens, even though they are close on the color wheel, but any of the close like any of the colors that closely match yellow should be good so the overlap basically is just a range for how many of those closely related colors you want to uh, edit to so for example like all of these all, where the green is is yellow because that's what the computer is editing but you can see that it doesn't count to these areas as yellow but if you do some stuff with overlap, you can see that the more overlap there is, the more that it counts as yellow. So if I just go all the way to 100, you can see that there really aren't even any holes here. I mean, you can just barely make them out, but it's pretty much, it just really, it's widened the range for what the computer counts as yellow. So it's editing a broader range of colors. So that is, um, I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, I thought it'd be longer, but anyway, if you have any questions whatsoever, comment them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. And um, I guess I'll just see you in the next one.